Let's talk about ATP because if there's a one molecule that determines whether we feel sharp and strong and energized and alive versus sluggish, foggy, and constantly pushing through fatigue, it's ATP. ATP is the energy currency inside your cells. Every single thing the body does from thinking to moving to repairing, digesting, building hormones, everything costs ATP. And as we age, ATP declines. It's not random and it's not mysterious. It's tied directly to what's happening inside your mitochondria, which are the cellular power plants. With age, mitochondrial function declines, and this is the primary reason that ATP levels drop. So let's break this down. The DNA inside mitochondria gradually starts to accumulate mutations as we age and oxidative damage. And when mitochondrial DNA is damaged, those mitochondria lose the ability to generate ATP efficiently. And then on top of that, aging mitochondria have lower oxidative capacity, so they produce less ATP from the same amount of fuel, like the food that we eat, and they leak more of the reactive oxygen species, or ROS. So basically, more metabolic exhaust, and that further damages the system. And then a third part of that puzzle is the quality control system breaks down. This is a system that keeps mitochondria healthy, and it basically becomes less efficient and less effective as we age. There's a process called mitophagy, which is where we remove the old damaged mitochondria, the ones that are slow and not really working so well. It's kind of like taking out the trash. And then we have mitochondrial biogenesis, which is where we create new mitochondria. Both of these processes slow down as we age. So over time, we basically have more older, less efficient mitochondria, and they simply can't meet the energy demands of our life. Now, mitochondria are the central players, but there are other contributing factors that make ATP decline even faster. Physical inactivity is a big one. Muscle is metabolically active, and when you lose muscle mass, you lose the number one driver of mitochondrial biogenesis. So if you stop challenging your mitochondria, you're not building muscle or training your muscles, then the body basically gets the message that we don't need that much ATP. Let's slow down. So the more we strength train, the more we're going to build more mitochondria. So it's something we definitely want to continue doing as we age, not just for aesthetics, but for our mitochondria, for our energy. Another thing is hormones. Hormones matter too. Growth hormone in particular, this helps support cellular repair, fat metabolism, and mitochondrial function. As growth hormone declines with age, and especially during perimenopause, ATP production is going to follow as well. And as we know, growth hormone helps us to build that lean muscle mass that we talked about a second ago. Insulin resistance is another major factor. As we age, many people develop some degree of insulin resistance, and that directly reduces mitochondrial protein content and respiration. In other words, your cells become less capable of using the fuel that you eat to make ATP. And if you're not, even if you're not pre-diabetic, you may still have some level of insulin resistance as you get older. It's just a natural part of aging. And again, strength training and exercise are going to help that tremendously. And finally, arterial stiffening. As blood vessels become more rigid with age, especially around the heart, the heart has to use more ATP just to do the same amount of work. So now that you have increased ATP demand, but decreased ATP production, that's when people really start feeling old. But the key message is feeling low energy, slow, or metabolically stagnant isn't a character flaw, and it's not a normal part of aging. Well, it is a normal part of aging, but it's one that we can have some influence over. It's basically an energy mismatch between what your mitochondria can produce and what your life requires. Now let's talk about what actually restores ATP. Number one, as I've already mentioned, strength training, that's at the top of the list. This is the most powerful stimulus for mitochondrial biogenesis. More muscle means more mitochondria, period. And more mitochondria means more ATP. This is why women can genuinely feel stronger and more metabolically flexible in their 50s than they did in their 30s if they train for it. And if you haven't started strength training yet, it's not too late. 
Zone 2 cardio builds mitochondrial efficiency as well. That's the ability to burn fat cleanly and steadily for fuel, and it increases mitochondrial density and oxidative capacity. So again, when we have more mitochondria, better functioning mitochondria, this is going to translate to better energy. And sleep is where mitochondrial repair happens. So if deep sleep is disrupted for continuous, you know, many days in a row or many years in a row, then ATP production flatlines and you can't really out supplement bad sleep. So I always say start with the basics before adding in more expensive peptides and supplements. And then heat and cold exposure, like sauna and cold plunge, these are going to activate mitochondrial pathways like AMPK and PGC1-alpha. This stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis, making more mitochondria, and it stimulates cellular stress resilience. So sauna and cold plunging aren't trends. They're actually impacting our biology in a very profound way. So if you have access to a sauna or a cold plunge, I suggest trying that out because it can be really beneficial for your mitochondrial health. Reducing inflammation matters a lot too. So especially through gut repair, this is something I talk about all the time with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. A lot of women are walking around with gut issues. As we age, this is a normal physiological process, but if your gut is inflamed, then your mitochondria are going to be in trouble too. So when I, personally, when I finally healed my gut and I really focused in on stress reduction, how to manage my stress finally, you know, late forties, that's when the gut permeability dysbiosis finally resolved and my energy changed completely. So you cannot separate gut health from mitochondrial health or just health in general. The gut is really the seat of everything. Nervous system regulation might be the most underrated piece. Chronic stress is going to burn ATP like wildfire. And when cortisol is high, your cells are on defense mode and they're not going to be making good, clean energy. They're going to be defending what's the assault that's coming at them. When you have high cortisol, your body thinks it's under stress, which it is. So nothing else is going to function efficiently. So what can we do about that? Well, there's you know ways to manage our stress, whether it be through breath work, meditation, whatever you can do to regulate your nervous system. It can even just be going outside and going for a walk or playing with your dog or your kids. These are things that make you feel calm and more collected and under control. And you need to regulate that or you need to include some of those in your daily life because this is a very high stressful world that we live in. And you know, we're being assaulted from all angles because, you know, we have constant email access and everything in our phone. We have high stress jobs. We have a very stressful environment that we live in as humans. So we really need to find ways to support that. And now let's talk about our favorite peptides, the icing on the cake. This is where things get really interesting. MOTC is one of the few peptides that directly targets mitochondrial metabolism and oh, by the way, it's also made by your own mitochondria. This is a natural peptide that our bodies make in response to exercise. And what it does is it activates that AMPK pathway, which is the pathway that is going to help our mitochondria function better and even contribute to having more mitochondria. And AMPK increases our insulin sensitivity. It also improves how our cells respond to carbohydrates and fat. And like I said, it boosts mitochondrial function. Now, as far as MOTC, the human data is still emerging. We have a really great animal results. They're very, very strong data there. And I've talked about that in another video. But so far, we don't have strong human data. So we're kind of extrapolating from the animal studies. SS31 is another mitochondrial targeting peptide. It's also known as a lamoprotide. It binds to cardiolipin in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and this basically stabilizes the mitochondrial structure. And this is the, the inner membrane is actually where our ATP production happens. So this peptide in theory is restoring our, well, it's been shown in animal studies to restore ATP output and in humans as well. It's, it's actually one of the few peptides that have FDA approval. And it reduces oxidative stress from the inside out. 
So it's being studied for heart failure, for age-related muscle decline, and mitochondrial myopathies. The data is really compelling with this one. And again, we're seeing increases in ATP output because we are restoring that mitochondrial membrane where the ATP production happens. Then we have some peptides that are going to be more working on the inflammatory state of our body and helping with healing that gut, that leaky gut or that dysbiosis. And the first one is going to be KPV, which reduces inflammation both in the gut and systemically. It removes one of the biggest stressors on mitochondrial function, inflammation. A second one is going to be GHK copper. Surprisingly, this also influences mitochondrial pathways through gene expression changes, and it also has anti-inflammatory signaling cascades as well. Now, peptides don't replace lifestyle, but they do support the underlying machinery, and peptides allow us to add back some of what is lost as we age. So I think of it as supplementing, basically giving the body more of what it had 20 years ago, because a lot of these peptides are natural and they start to decline with age, just like our hormones, and we add back our hormones. We can think of peptides in the same way to some extent. And combining them with lifestyle like strength training or cardio, this can really keep your body functioning better for longer. All right, now let's add in the supplements that actually matter for mitochondrial health. So NAD injections or NMN and NR precursors, these are the one of the most effective ways to restore mitochondrial electron transport chain function and ATP output. Oral NAD precursors like NR or NMN can help, but injections do have a more direct impact. You can either inject NAD plus directly or do IVs, which are going to really flood the system with high amounts of NAD that it can utilize. And we know that NAD plus levels decrease with age, so this is another way of restoring the system. CoQ10, specifically the ubiquinol form of that, it supports the complex three in the mitochondria. It's part of the electron transport chain, again, essential for ATP production, especially in the heart. So CoQ10 is absolutely essential for ATP and for the mitochondria to function. So I always say that most, you know, everybody should be taking CoQ10. Creatine is one of the most underappreciated mitochondrial supplements. I know we don't normally think of it that way. We're like, think of it as a muscle building supplement, but it actually helps recycle ATP quickly during high demand activities like strength training, hence why it's kind of considered in that realm. And it supports brain and energy metabolism. So it's another one that I really think everybody could benefit from. And then alpha lipoic acid or ALA, this is going, this is an antioxidant and it's going to um, support mitochondrial oxidation processes and kind of, you know, be an overall antioxidant for the system, which is something that we could use more of as we age. Then L-carnitine, if you know, I'm always talking about L-carnitine, it transports fatty acids into the mitochondria so they can be burned for fuel. Who doesn't want that? Just basically utilizing the stored fat that we have for fuel, so enhancing um, that aspect. Omega-3s like fish oil, EPA, DHA, these are going to improve the fluidity of the mitochondrial membranes and really all of our cellular membranes. These are excellent for heart health and overall health and another you know, supplement that should be part of everybody's uh, regular routine. And magnesium, this one's huge. I love magnesium. It's literally required to activate ATP. So ATP in the body is actually magnesium ATP. And without magnesium, ATP can't do anything. I prefer magnesium glycinate or magne magnesium threonate, which magnesium threonate crosses the blood brain barrier. So it has a little bit more of the brain effects. Magnesium glycinate is a very well absorbed form of magnesium as well. And now whole food nutrition and adequate protein, of course, are also going to support ATP by fueling muscles and stabilizing our blood sugar and just reducing that overall inflammatory drag on the system. And when you put all this together, the story becomes very clear. Aging isn't just about wrinkles or slower metabolism or hormonal shifts, although those are all part of the picture, but it's a gradual decline of mitochondrial efficiency and it's essentially an energy problem. 
but the decline is not fixed. You can absolutely rebuild ATP production by training your mitochondria, strength training and exercise, reducing inflammation through lifestyle choices or peptides, supporting your nervous system. This one's on you. You've got to do the work there um, to calm down the uh, nervous system and you know build some tools for yourself. And optimizing hormones, which you know maybe replacing hormones, improving sleep, lifting heavy, and bringing in mitochondrial peptides and supplements very strategically to support that system and replace what's being lost. Midlife doesn't have to be about energy loss. If we recalibrate the system, we can take back control over this process. And when you understand ATP, you realize you have far more control over how you age than what you were told. See you in the next episode.